Hello, buddy. Princess the Bear here. We're today at Sapphire Falls. Falls. For Amatista. Yes. This hotel just reopened, so we're back to try more resort food. Universal haven't let us down yet, so let's hope this is going to do more of the same. Be sure to Falls Sapphire Falls. You heard the girl. Now we have a sangria. Ooh. Yeah, you can really taste like the, the notes of the liqueur in it. Like an orangey flavor almost. Not bad for a sangria. It's a little watered down obviously because of the ice. I would give it out of five bread grapes, not in my top 10 best sangria. For Jamaican time, make it sangria time. It feels like a basic sangria. The lemon's not really helping it. This is actually a time where I wish I had more fruit. It looks like you just have the lemon and lime in here. Well, do you like sangria, which means it's a bit watered down, I think. I might have two out of five plus. And I got one of their signature cocktails, the Smoke Show, which from all the ingredients, it looks like a rum version of an old fashioned with a gigantic stick of cinnamon. Also liquid smoke in it. Smells interesting. Down the hatch. Ooh. Now that tastes like something I'd want to sit on a boat and probably never leave. That is super strong. That's got a bigger kick. You can sort of taste the bitters in the back end, the liquid smoke. The Kahlua is in there, but it's really light. And the Kahlua, unfortunately, makes this drink not vegan. Uh, apparently Kahlua has it's processed with some milk proteins, so even though it's not a heavily based milk drink, apparently not suitable. Shame though, the princess would love this. That will definitely put you in your behind. I put that four out of five plus. I ordered a grilled pineapple salad, believe it or not. And I thought it was actually gonna be more of like pieces of pineapple. This is a, this is a really a legit salad. It has lettuce, arugula, quinoa, tomatoes, avocado, roasted red pepper, plantain chips, and then a citrus vinaigrette. I'm kind of excited to try this. This is like, Ooh, I love some quinoa too. I'm even gonna take some pineapple. This looks almost overdressed, but we'll see. Maybe the citrus is light. It is a very light, but full of dressing salad. The pineapple is super fresh. Charred. Pretty good. A little too pineapple for me, but I enjoy all of the rest of the flavors in the salad. It really, everything brings it together. So, this is a winning salad. This is a big entree. I'm going to give this a four and a half out of five pineapple slices. Now, this is what I expect when I order a salad at a restaurant, not your little dinky side salad. If it's got like a name to it, like a signature name, this is what I expect. And for an appetizer, this thing is massive. You have these like small grilled chunks of pineapple. I was definitely expecting them to be bigger. And then you have massive chunks of avocado, the quinoa, the pepper, which is like almost jellied, and the tomato. I am actually excited for this. 
haven't been excited for a salad in a very long time. That is a wonderful mix of flavors. The avocado and the, the pineapple actually pair nice and sort of melt each other out. The dressing, there's a lot of it, but I think it goes well with everything that's in here. The quinoa is in there, it doesn't get in the way. It's a very like bright tropical salad. It's like almost like a tropical salsa elevated. I approve. It's four and a half out of five claws. It's probably one of the favorite salads I've had this year. Easily. Here we have their signature conch chowder. Looking some huge chunks of potato in here and celery and some sort of protein, but it's like a little tomato broth with seasonings. Looks very, very hearty. Now let's see if this isn't hearty enough to stop my heart. Nice and meaty with just enough veggies. Definitely but what I would, I would consider under the hearty category as far as the chatter is concerned. The broth is flavored, seasoned very well, and just thick enough so it's not like watery. This is a top tier chowder. We don't, I don't get much soup on our channel, but um, this is something that I would consider to be on my bare necessities list. Five out of five plus. mind the pineapple as like a fruit. I like the texture. I like the initial flavor. It's not hard to chew or anything. It's just that like aftertaste that you get afterwards. I kind of like grapefruit. That's where you lose me on pineapple. I just can't. This is probably one of the chunkiest curries I have ever had. I'm just gonna grab me like a little piece of these veggies. And let's see what they taste like. Nice coconut milk smell. Mm. It really melts in your mouth. There's a lot of flavor. The food is seasoned. So that's a win. It's a big win. I'm gonna rate these veggies a four and a half out of five veggies. I'm gonna say these veggies are up there with like a boma or a chico. Next we have rice. Just a nice little rice to go with. It's a nice white rice. It's, it's very delicious. It's cooked perfectly. I'm going to give that a three out of five rice grains. It's, you know, average. And then lastly, we have some nice little toasted pitas. Pita y. I kind of wish it had like some hummus to it with it. But I suppose you're supposed to dip it all in the curry, but the curry is not like liquidy. It's like a chunky curry, so I'm not really sure what the purpose of the bread is. I suppose you could make like little uh, tacos. Overall, this dish um, is good. It's pretty good. It's, it's a competitor with some of the, the top Disney restaurants, so I'm going to say it's like a four out of five curry leaves. I'm always interested to see how different cultures make curry. Everybody's got their own way. There is no wrong way. We've had uh, Mideast Asian like, curries. We've had Japanese curries. We've had Indian curries. Here we are with some Jamaican curry. Or Caribbean or Island curry. But to mixture a lot of things in here, I'm just gonna spear one of these here 
little trees. I'm gonna give this a uh, curry sauce a try. Mmm. Curry sauce is amazing. It's light but flavorful. But not so powerful, you still can't taste the veggies coming through. The veggies are well cooked all the way through and perfectly seasoned. It's a solid curry. Give that four out of five claws. You have this little side of rice. A little curry sauce on the side there. The rice is a bit more crunchy than I like my rice. I've been just a tad bit overcooked. It's still solid rice. Give that two out of five plus. The pita bread is an interesting thing to me. But I also don't understand why it's on this plate. But here's what I'm gonna do. I give the pita a fighting chance. I'm gonna get some of this rice. It has a curry sauce on it. And then I'm gonna get this little piece of veggie here. Also some curry on it. And we're gonna try it as a whole. Now that's either you're going for. That brings it all together. Not, oddly enough, the rice and the bread goes well. The veggies on top. I wish there was more sauce. I think it was just on the side, like a light drizzle. But other than that, I can give the whole plate a solid three and a half out of five claws. So I would definitely eat this and not feel bad about it. I approve. Next, we have some beautiful yucca. Apparently, somebody forgot to take the bay leaf out. But all right. What else are we going to try this yucca? Nice, soft, basically potato. Ooh! It's got like this sweet and sour savory to it because it's like a mojo. This is amazing. Bear is going to be jealous that he didn't order this too. I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5. Yucca frites. Even though they're not frites, I'm calling them frites. They're amazing, amazing like muddled frites. Yes. So we have the equivalent here of what is basically a chunky mashed yucca with seasonings. I guess they love the bay leaf as a garnish. There's also some like peppers in here as well. Just give it a good little bite. That's the kind of dish that makes you question why you've never used this root vegetable as like a any other dish. The consistency is amazing, whether it's thick and dense, but it's cooked so it just sort of just melts in your mouth. It seasons really well. It's got a really nice punch, but it's tangy. I approve. This four and five claws. I am sort of doubting myself for I have ordered this. Now the prince is gonna take it all. We'll steal one more bite. You didn't see that. I seen it. So here we have a blue margarita from my blue Ravenclaw self. This margarita has Contrao, which Contrao is not actually blue. None of the ingredients um, on the list uh, say anything about it being blue. So maybe it's got like some something in it. Maybe it's just food coloring. Oh, oh, that's good. That's got some nice like punch to it. It's, it's like a lime margarita, but it's colored and has just a little bit more of a punch to it. So, four out of five cherries. This drink is a win. When I get a Caribbean themed margarita, this is what I expect. A drink 
the blue the ocean should be of all the fixings. It's got that signature tequila flavor, but it's got like a refreshing undertone. Almost like, not the, the taste you get, but that feeling you get from like an ice cold Gatorade. I like this, four out of five balls. Like margaritas, you should definitely order this one. Restaurants, when you put a big colored box on a menu, I know what you're doing. And you got me. So I got I'm trying out their rotisserie meal. It's a half a chicken with two sides. So I got red beans and I got uh, beans and rice and plantains, which really feels like three sides instead of two. Obviously, you don't want a beans with rice, but it feels like three sides. The chicken looks amazing, and you got two little dips with it. I have no idea what either of them are. One's a chimichurri. So we have a garlic sauce here. Looks kind of creamy, kind of worried about this one. And then we have a cilantro, sort of like cream looking sauce over here. Which is something I think I've had before at some other Jamaican Caribbean themed dishes. So um, I'm just gonna do the savage thing and take this wing here. Cause it looks like it was made for me. And dip it. I've had like a store-bought like Mojo purchaser chicken before, but nothing that packed the flavor of the meat that this has. And that uh, creamy cilantro sauce is like better than anything you get like a Pollo Tropical or anything like that. That sauce is amazing and I need to know how to make that now. I'm gonna need a, ve a vegan version of that. Stat. Chicken itself is juicy, well cooked, seasoned. The skin isn't the only thing. What's good here, it's also the uh, the meat is delicious. This is how you cook chicken. Other restaurants, Chicken Guy, uh, Smokehouse, Regal Eagle, this is chicken. This is how you cook chicken. As for this garlic sauce, I'm gonna give the cilantro cream sauce with the chicken four and a half out of five points. Much creamier than I was expecting. We still have very strong sauce, very garlic on the back end. Not as good as the other, but still really tasty. I would give that three and a half out of five plus. The chicken on its own for me is a solid five out of five plus. That is good chicken, bar none. This is what Caribbean food is supposed to taste like. We have our sides here. Let's go ahead and try these plantains. They aren't dried out. Pork goes right through. Mm. Fried well, warm center, not greasy. Three and a half out of five claws. I will take a plantain over a sweet potato any day of the week. Properly cooked, of course. That's for these black beans and rice. Which is hard to ruin, I hope. Mm. Very, very smoky black bean. Seasoned well. More whole beans, but they're, they're cooked perfectly. It's a solid bean. Look at that. Three out of five paws. Overall, I'm gonna give the whole plate of four and a half out of five claws, but this is still going my bare necessities list as a whole. Pick whatever sides you want. This chicken, though, is worth the cost of admission. My only question, though, is universal. If all your hotel food is this good, what's your excuse to park food? I have questions that need answers. But bare stamp of approval either way.
So Amity's cookout. It was very delicious. Very surprising. The food was impressive. They have definitely upheld the bar of what I expect from Universal Food. Still breaks my heart that the food at the hotels is so much better than the food at the parks. You have the capability, you have the space, you have the know-how, at least with your partners, you need better food. I just feel like if Disney was to envision a Sebastian's Bistro like cooking place, it would be this. It breaks my heart. This place does Borlo Sebastian's Bistro out of the water, but it makes me excited for Sebastian's Bistro to possibly reopen no, eventually, that's maybe. Not we liked the place when it first opened. What's until they changed the menu that it got bad? This, so, this restaurant is way more successful way and their food is way better. Just come here and stuff. I would say the cost, the value, the quality of food you get, way, way above Sebastian's View, so at the very least. Oh, yeah. But, oh, yeah. Service was great. Food was great. I love the open kitchen. You got to, like, see the Sapphire Falls. Yeah, very pretty by restaurant. Your table. Great, great restaurant. But I want to know, have you guys been to the cookhouse? If so, let us know in the comments. If there's anywhere else you want us to go in Sapphire Falls or any other universe resort, that's going to be a place to let us know. Hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. And we will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the girl. And like this video. Oh, oh.